So, so speaking of um, you know, knowing where we are and where we have to go, so you've been a tireless advocate for this for a while in terms of a gender lens up across the spectrum. Um, where do you see it making a difference? What's working? You know, to be perfectly frank, I don't think it's made a lot of a di lot of difference yet, and that's why we're here. That's what we're here talking about. Um, you know, we we apply a gender lens across all of our funds at, at my company, Pax World, and we have one fund called the Global Women's Equality Fund, which is the only mutual fund in America that sole focus is on on investing in companies that um, uh, really promote gender equality and women's empowerment. And we engage in shareholder activism and so forth. So we apply a gender lens. Um, but, you know, we read every year that, you know, the latest statistics come out, it just came out again, 12% uh, of, of boards of directors of American corporations are, are, are women. And the needle on that hasn't moved very much in recent years. It's, um, it's really stuck. Um, so when you think about a gender lens, I think actually we can do some things that will move that needle by applying a gender lens. And in fact, I think we are, we are part of the problem, all of us, as to why that, that needle isn't moving more right now. There's a, there's a piece on your tables that Jackie Zaner and I wrote together called Say No to All Male Boards, and Pax World launched a project about that this week. But l l let me just use it as a concrete example of how a gender lens can make a difference. When we hear that 12% of boards are women, meaning that 88% are men, we, you know, we go, darn, wish we could do something about that, that's terrible, it's, it's unjust, and so forth. But guess what? Those boards of corporations are elected every year. And guess who elects them? We do. <laughs> because we own their shares because we own stock or we own mutual funds either directly or through the investment advisor who advises us or our family or, or through a mutual fund or through our 401k plan at work or for an academia or a 403b plan, um, through a rollover IRA we took from our last job. We own stock, we own mutual funds. And you know what happens? Every year in advance of every single company's general meeting, they send out a proxy with its slate of directors on it. And what happens when those proxies come in the mail, you either don't vote them, or whoever, use, whoever votes your proxy votes down the line with management's recommendations. And management's recommendations are either no women or a board where women are grossly underrepresented. Now, if you can quit smoking, you can quit doing this. Seriously. <laughs> You, you really can. And until you do, as much as we all gather, we're, we are part of the problem, not part of the solution. So we have to start saying no. You have to insist that your mutual fund votes no or go to another mutual fund. You have to insist that your investment advisor votes your proxies against or withhold support from all male boards or hire another investment advisor. You know, we can move the needle on this. Um, what we do at Pax World, we, on, we not only vote no if they have no women, in fact in most cases in developed countries if they don't have at least two women, we vote no, or we withhold support because you can't often vote, uh, you have to go with management's recommendations or do nothing, but we withhold support, then we write them a letter and we tell them why we did not support their board because it did not have any gender diversity on it, and then we send them model charter language for the nominating committee telling them how they can embrace gender diversity on their board. Now, we're a little old PAX world, $3 billion, but can you imagine if TIA Cref or Fidelity or Vanguard started doing that? So this week, you know, I sent a letter to 165 institutional investors across the country, the 100 largest mutual funds, the 25 largest state pension funds, women's colleges and universities, foundations and endowments, asking to join us. Say no, withhold your proxies from all male boards, and then write a letter to the company, tell them you're not supporting their board until they embrace gender diversity, and, and help them do that. That will move the needle. When companies start hearing from their shareholders, <laughs> when companies hear from their largest institutional shareholders that those shareholders are not supporting their slate of directors, you're gonna see that needle move. That's something we can easily do. So I quit smoking about 20, 25 years ago. I cheat once in a while when I have a drink or two. But seriously, it's easy to do, but we have to do it. It's a very concrete example of what a gender lens can be, and more institutional investors have to start doing it.